Okay, let's learn other types of detector. Uh, the charged aerosol detector here uh, is a uh, very sensitive, and uh, this is a universal detector, which means that uh, all kinds of one light can be detected by uh, this means. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a look of this uh, uh, sch schematics of this detector. Now, the iliot from HPLC column is now enters uh, here. Uh, this uh, the nebulizer, okay, and then this uh, uh, you know separated uh, uh, your uh, solute here uh, is uh, what uh, by this nebulizer uh, become a fine mist, okay, here fine mist, but here uh, you uh, inlet the um, your input uh, nitrogen gas, uh, dry the nitrogen gas through this uh, uh, this part, and then here. Uh, inside the nebulizer, uh, the uh, this uh, nitrogen gas uh, uh, makes uh, your uh, iliot uh, to as a fine mist. But here, uh, inside the, the fine uh, the mist, uh, in the large droplets may uh, be drained, maybe uh, drained uh, from this uh, you know this line to waste. Okay, and only the fine mist. Yeah. Uh, enters uh, this part okay here uh, it is uh, uh, you know the the part uh, here is the uh, uh, this is called corona discharging a uh, corona charging chamber okay and uh, this uh, in this area uh, the nitrogen gas also uh, are uh, inputted uh, to this area the here you this uh, fine mist yeah, this is your solute yeah? and uh, in, in the here is a uh, you know, electrode okay uh, this is platinum needle you know? uh, about uh, 10,000 uh, volt was applied with, with respect to uh, this uh, uh, you know this case okay so here uh, by this uh, the corona uh, charging your fine mist takes uh, uh, you know positive charge here and, and then it is carried out okay by this uh, nitrogen gas uh, to this uh, uh, this part this is collector okay but uh, the, in the middle there is a trap okay here trap yeah? uh, so uh, is a small ions you know, contained in this um, uh, you know, positive charge, you know, the, uh, the species, the small ions are, are trapped uh, in this area, okay? And then in the collector, uh, since uh, your, uh, your solute uh, are, uh, are positively charged, and then uh, the, in the, your total charges are collected uh, here, and then uh, by the uh, what by the electro electrometer okay I don't know the the, 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 the principle how you know this electrometer measures the positive charge reaching uh, collector anyway I think this, this is uh, uh, you know positively charged uh, your the uh, solute yeah? and the charges are uh, collected by this one okay uh, that way uh, you can detect your solute so uh, any solute can be detected so that's why it's uh, called a universal detector yeah. your total charge in reaching the collector here is measured by electrometer uh, which produces a det and detector signal for the chromatogram okay. the dynamic range of this detector spans four to five orders of magnitude yeah. in concentration the response is approximately Proportional to the square root of uh, mass, okay, mass of the solute. Well, uh, so uh, this type of detection is quite uh, complicated, but your textbook says uh, this one, this detector finds uh, its uh, application in industry. Okay, okay you know, uh, the another type of detector is uh, based on electrochemical uh, method, okay? You know, yeah, I'm very familiar with. Uh, uh, this uh, detector, yeah, electrochemical detector, and then uh, after uh, you see, let's take a look at um, uh, this one. 
this figure. Uh, this is chromatography column. This is the HPS column. Now, uh, you know, the, the solutes are separated and it, it is uh, coming out of from uh, this column and enters this part. Okay, this is the uh, uh, electrode, electrochemical sensor to detect uh, your solute. Okay, here it passes through uh, this one uh, here, and then here is the uh, uh, this one is quite a thin layer, and then uh, underneath here uh, uh, we put uh, electrode. Okay, in this case, a copper electrode here. Yeah? And then all the solute and then a solvent together and uh, pass through uh, this part okay and then uh, it exit so this one this copper metal now <coughs> is working uh, as a working electrode yeah? acting as a working electrode and here you put a reference electrode yeah? so you apply <coughs> your potential uh, to the uh, this uh, working electrode with respect to the reference electrode and you need another electrode yeah? because the ordinary uh, electrochemical measurement is done by uh, three electrode system okay another one is called uh, counter electrode or auxiliary electrode here yeah? uh, this one the stainless steel this metal uh, can, uh, is uh, used as a working electro uh, the counter uh, electrode or auxiliary electrode okay. so um, how do you do we um, uh, detect uh, the separated analyte yeah? so all the you know, uh, you know separated analyte now pass through this part and then here it uh, um, on the this uh, working electro surface yeah? so you 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 have to apply uh, you know, positive enough or negative enough uh, potential to the uh, working electrode to uh, oxidize or reduce your uh, analyte here, right? And mostly, you know, you apply uh, positive uh, potentials. And so, uh, this um, detection method is not universal, but its uh, uh, application is rather <coughs> confined to the Organic molecules like uh, phenols, aromatic amines, uh, peroxide, uh, molecules, ketones, aldehydes, and conjugated nitrous, aromatic halogens, aromatic nitro compounds, and so on. Right? Because uh, these uh, uh, organic uh, molecules can be oxidized or reduced electrochemically. Okay? Potential is maintained at a selected value. You apply the constant potential here. And current is proportional to the solute concentration over six orders of magnitude. Yeah? This is one of the big advantages of electrochemical detection, okay? Because it gives a very linear response over six orders of, mag of magnitude, okay? Here's an uh, example. Actually, this, uh, these figures uh, are taken from uh, you know, our textbook, chapter 16. <coughs> yeah? And uh, that, uh, you know, the in the sugars, okay, sugars contained in a, a beverage. Yeah, beverage contains a lot of different sugars, yeah? and then they can be uh, uh, very well separated by HPLC. Yeah, here. So now it uh, it contains uh, eight compound, eight kind of this, uh, the sugars, okay, and uh, this is sugar uh, is readily oxidized. Hmm? Electrochemically eh, on the electro the surface, okay, and uh, uh, look at that. Uh, this one, it is uh, while the, uh, the separated sugars now pass through uh, this electrode, and then it can be uh, very nicely uh, detected uh, by oxidation in this case, okay. And for the uh, what. Uh, Detection to lower the detection limit, you know, we can uh, apply uh, you know, other electrochemical technique, so called pulsed electrochemical technique, okay? and which means that uh, uh, you apply you know, a potential pulse to the working electrode, you know, like a gold or platinum working electrode, yeah, and. Uh, uh, 
since you know this ordinary electrochemical detection method, you cannot detect, uh, let's see, the alcohols, carbohydrates, and, sul and sulfur compound. Yeah, they are uh, not readily detected by this, uh, uh, you know, ordinary uh, uh, detection. Uh, so in that case, uh, mm, the first electrochemical measurement, uh, you know, enables us to um, detect these class of uh, molecules. Okay? And uh, uh, the principle is that uh, apply you apply the sequence of pulses and integrated current after the charging current decays to zero. Okay? And in this case, uh, you uh, the make you apply the potential pulse okay, to the electrode. You know, these uh, uh, molecules are absorbed on the electrode surface. And then you uh, apply uh, the you know, potential to dissolve you know, and uh, these molecules from the surface. Yeah? And then uh, you apply the positive, uh, for example, positive potential to oxidize uh, these molecules. Okay? And, uh, and then uh, or you oxidize, apply oxidation potential or reduction potential. Either way, yeah, depending on the molecules, okay. yeah. and uh, why oxidize uh, apply the the pulse because to dissolve these molecules and and also to uh, you know by applying negative potential uh, the the you know also this um, uh, uh, gold or platinum el uh, electrodes uh, can be oxidized, yeah? you know, oxide layer. Uh, may be formed on the, the surface so by applying negative potential yeah, then uh, you can reduce uh, yeah, the oxidized gold or platinum surface to the, um, the, the pure metal surface and then you apply uh, you know for example a positive potential to oxidize these molecules okay yeah but here is a uh, one uh, one problem which is the uh, uh, charging current problem okay? and uh, when you apply the pulse mm, you have to worry about the uh, uh, you know the charging current you know, charging current is the uh, is a current that is not uh, related to oxidation or reduction okay uh, only Faraday current is needed yeah, Faraday current is the current that is uh, that comes from oxidation or reduction of the compound. Okay, so you have to measure only Faraday current. Okay, but in the current includes not both in the Faraday and charging current. So you have to decrease the charging current. Okay, how do you do that? Uh, it's very uh, simple, because the Faraday current and charging currents um, are decreasing. Okay, with time, but decreasing rate. You know of charging current is much faster than the Faraday current yeah? so you wait you know, so, you know few um, hundred milliseconds yeah? and then the charging current may decay to uh, nearly zero okay about uh, about the, you know, after um, delaying 400 milliseconds yeah the charging current yeah, decays to zero of course you know the uh, Faraday current also decays but the uh, decay still uh, you know, you, uh, there is a yes, uh, still Faraday current, and uh, you measure uh, the current, and then you integrate. In this case, uh, the first electrochemical measurement, you 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 don't uh, record uh, the current, but usually you record um, the charge. Yeah? To to record the charge, you have to integrate current over time all right here current is uh, integrated for the next 200 milliseconds to measure on a light okay so this is a result okay? uh, this chromatograms uh, come from the uh, first electrochemical measurement and x-axis is time as usual and y-axis is uh, coulombs okay coulomb not current okay? and uh, you know there are many many uh, at least 15 uh, you know the separated uh, molecules. Okay, they are you know are, are listed here. Okay, and uh, also there is a, um, a, a kind of universal uh, detector. 
the based on refractive index change. Okay? That's a refractive index detector and uh, respond to almost every solute. Okay? But its detection limit is very poor. It's about 1,000 times poorer than that of the ultraviolet detector. Yeah? Uh, think about that. Yeah? You see, uh, um, you know, the, every material uh, or liquid or solid, uh, even a uh, gas, uh, they have refractive index. Okay? And also in a HPLC solvent, you know, the mobile phase has its own refractive index. Yeah? And in the presence of uh, the solute, right, then the refractive index may change, although little. Okay? So uh, by changing, by detecting the refractive index change, uh, you can, uh, we can detect you know, the, the solute. Right? So this, this detector is also universal. It is not limited to a specific groups of uh, uh, molecules. Okay? This is uh, uh, quite a uh, universal detection detector, but the response is quite poor, one thousand times poor. Yeah? So if uh, your uh, the uh, solute concentration is quite low, you no, know, it is not detected by the, this detector. But uh, it has a certain advantage. Okay. Uh, diffraction type detector has a uh, two uh, triangular compartment uh, through which pure solvent and elute passes. Okay, to take the you know the, the reflective index difference, you have to have two passes. Okay, two compartment, one for the uh, pure solvent and the other for the uh, elute, yeah, including solvent. Collimated uh, visible light filtered to remove. Uh, infrared radiation that would uh, heat the sample passes through the cell with pure solvent in both compartments and is directed to a photodiode array. Okay, and uh, you have to have a collimated uh, visible light. You know, collimation means they make it parallel. Okay, and you have to remove infrared. Yeah, because you know infrared. Uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, heat the sample okay all right when solute with uh, different uh, refractive index enters the cell the beam is uh, deflected and uh, different pixels of array are irradiated okay uh, if the refractive index uh, changes and then uh, the beam is uh, uh, deflected okay that is well known a refractive index detector is useless uh, in gradient illusion. Yeah, well, this is important part. Uh, in gradient illusion, uh, uh, the refractive index detector is useless because we cannot uh, match the sample and the reference while solvent composition is changing. You know the gradient illusion, right? That means that uh, while you uh, uh, do the uh, separation, you change the uh, solvent, okay? You change the composition of a solvent. Yeah, if the change uh, the composition, and then uh, the refractive index also changes. Okay, and then since you use, we use, usually use uh, two containers, two compartments. Yeah, one for the uh, you know the solvent, and the other one for uh, the uh, elute. Okay, so you know uh, two compartment uh, refractive index must match. Okay, but that is uh, not possible during the uh, illusion okay refractive index is sensitive to change in pressure and temperature of course when temp temperature or pressure changes refractive index also changes okay with uh, its low sensitivity refractive index detector is not useful for trace analysis okay so so you you have to have a large amount of uh, solute okay? it also has a small linear range span only a factor of 500 wow such a, a small linear range in solute concentration. The primary appeal of this detector is its universal response. Yeah, this is important. Yeah, it doesn't uh, uh, care about the uh, the kinds of uh, uh, the solute, right? It applies to all the solutes, including those that have a little ultraviolet absorption. Okay, 
it has advantage and also this uh, advantage but you know this advantage is too great yeah? so this is not uh, uh, very widely used yeah? yeah here is the comment on mass spectrometry detection in liquid chromatography yeah? uh, usually you know the um, uh, HPLC it may be used alone but in many cases you know, HPLC is combined with a uh, mass spectrometer okay this is kind uh, LC mass yeah? it gives you you know extremely you know, low detection limit okay uh, to detect you know trace amount of a uh, solute usually uh, people employ the LC HPLC and mass spectrometer okay in this case the mass spectrometer uh, is uh, what working as a, a detector okay you know mass spectrometer uh, is uh, itself very sensitive yeah? very sensitive technique so with combination of uh, uh, HPLC and mass spectrometer yeah? <coughs> it's quite possible to uh, you know detect uh, extremely low concentration of uh, analyte okay? Atmospheric pressure, chemical ionization, <coughs> electrospray ionization are most common liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry interface. Okay. In order to use mass spectrometry, you have to ionize your analyte. Yeah? There are many uh, uh, methods for ionization, but for the, <coughs> uh, for the uh, you know LC detector, uh, the chemical ionization and electrospray ionization. Uh, are uh, most uh, uh, most commonly used okay atmospheric uh, pressure chemical ion radiation creates ions from on a light you don't have to apply high vacuum as well as from uh, other species in solution uh, in the meantime electrospray requires that on a light be charged in solution right volatile low concentration uh, you know, low concentration uh, means uh, 10 millimolar buffers used with mass spectrometers are made from formic acid, acetic acid, <coughs> and ammonia. You know, in a, uh, for the HPLC, you have to have you know the uh, uh, what the solvent, but solvent may be uh, made up. Um, you know, Mixed okay from one from the aqueous uh, and the other one from uh, organic solvent okay and aqueous solvent uh, usually are buffers okay so you have to make a buffer uh, buffer you know the uh, low concentration buffer yeah, made out of formic acid acetic acid and ammonia yeah? but in this case HCl should not be used because it corrodes the metal interface. HCl is a very uh, corrosive uh, liquid. Yeah? Uh, it corrodes the metal interface. Okay? Never use HCl. Blank injection should be run to observe background ions generated in the absence of a sample. Okay? Blank injection. Okay? That means the uh, blank means the uh, uh, the medium without uh, the species of uh, interest. Okay? Suitable organic solvents include nitrile, methanol, ethanol, propanol, and acetone. Yeah? Those are uh, suitable organic uh, solvents. Tetrahydrofuran is less uh, desirable because for some types of uh, samples, it can lead to large background signal okay? in a total ion chromatogram and because it is not compatible with commonly used uh, polyether ether ketone yeah, peak yeah, tubing with mass spectrometric detection right there is a yeah, tubing for mass spectrometer right that uh, usually made up uh, peak polyether ether ketone yeah? this material is very good yeah? very good material yeah? although it is expensive yeah? but it's not compatible with uh, tetrahydrofuran okay be careful Iron pair reagent and surfactant should not be used because they create the background signals and suppress electrospray signals. Okay? So iron pair agent must be uh, avoided. Run a performance qualification sample or internal standard frequently to verify that 
the separation and the mass spectrometer are behaving normally, right? Before running your true sample, real sample, run a performance qualification, okay? Uh, uh, sample, okay? Or maybe you can use internal uh, standard, okay? Right? The, those things are the uh, comments on mass spectrometry detection in uh, liquid chromatography, okay?